adventures begin with a dream and a willingness to step into the unknown. The willingness to risk everything for a vision began in 1535 near Brescia, Italy, when Angela Merici dared to be different. She gathered a group of women together to pray and work with orphans and women who needed help and education. Angela was a daring woman. She founded her community outside the walls of a cloister unheard of at that time, and named it in honor of another brave woman, the martyred Saint Ursula. This was the beginning of a community that would eventually span the globe. Ursulines arrived in North America in 1639 and founded a community in Quebec. The first Ursulines came to Kentucky in 1858 when Mother Pia Schoenhofer and two other sisters arrived in Louisville to establish an Ursuline community there. In 1874, Father Paul Joseph Falk, pastor of St. Alphonsus Church in Western Davis County, wanted to establish a school for Catholic girls in that part of the state. He contacted Mother Pia and she answered the call. She asked sisters Xavier Verm, Margaret Algar, Johanna Freba, and Martina Grenader to join her on the long journey to Davis County. The first Ursuline flatboat adventure began in August of 1874 when the five pioneering sisters boarded a flatboat in Louisville and floated down the Ohio River to Owensboro. In rural Western Davis County, they founded a school that would evolve into the community now known as the Ursuline Sisters of Mount St. Joseph. One hundred and thirty years later, the Ursulines of Mount St. Joseph retraced that journey on a replica of the original flatboat, which they named Angela's Ark. In the spring of 2004, Captain John Cooper, a skilled boat builder and reenactor from Gallatin, Tennessee, was commissioned to construct the replica of the 1874 flatboat. It arrived at Mount St. Joseph on August 8th. The following evening, flatboat sponsors, sisters, and friends were on hand for a special dinner capped off with the formal christening of Angela's Ark. Now we christen you Angela's Ark. <laughs> On August 10th, it was off to Louisville for a prayer service in the chapel of the Louisville Ursulines and a Bon Voyage dinner in the Mother House dining room. The first day of the five-day, 155-mile journey began with an early morning appearance on a Louisville television program. We're out here today to reenact what happened 130 years ago when the first five Ursuline sisters came from Louisville, Kentucky. Followed by Mass at St. Martin of Tours Church, the same church the 1874 Ursulines attended before their voyage began. Then it was off to the riverfront at New Albany, Indiana, in a Louisville police cruiser. A large crowd had gathered to send us on our way. New Albany Mayor James Garner declared the day in honor of the sisters, and we presented him with a cross made from the wood of a tree planted by Father Valk in the late 1800s and some maple tree seedlings grown from the seeds of trees at Mount St. Joseph. 
The same gifts would be presented at each of the towns where we stopped for the night. Sister Jean Ann Zappa, president of the Louisville Ursulines, gave a blessing and urged the sisters to go forth with the prayers of her community. Finally, like our predecessors 130 years earlier, Sisters Elaine Burke, Pam Mueller, Lorraine Lauder, Betsy Moyer, and myself, Amelia Stenger, set sail on our own journey with love, enthusiasm, and adventurous hearts. became apparent that the knowledge and skills of Captain Cooper and his crew would prove invaluable to the journey. Another example of God's answering our prayers for help by sending us the right people at the right time. Captain Cooper was able to appreciate the hazards the pioneer Ursulines faced on their 1874 voyage down the river. As far as adventures, uh, the river, there was no U.S. Corps of Engineers making the water maintain certain heights and, and depths. So there was no uh, Coast Guard out there to set buoys. So you were just out here floating along on a river that you don't really know where you're going. You have no idea what hazards are in front of you, but you know there are a lot of hazards. At least the people that are moving the boat know. And so they would continuously get caught on a snag, or they might uh, run up on a sandbar and everybody had to get off and push off. Things like that happen all the time. A total of 14 sisters took part in the reenactment of the journey, but only three were on board Angela's Ark the entire distance. Three new sisters joined the adventure each evening when the Ark docked for the night, two representing two of the pioneer Ursulines and one acting as first mate. Each of the participating sisters had her own reasons for undertaking the voyage, and each was affected by the experience in a uniquely personal way. When I first heard about this adventure, or this reenactment of the adventure, I wanted to be a part of it. I wanted to experience this dream, this mission that the first five sisters went on 130 years ago. 
and it'll really be more fun, I think, when we have to actually start taking care of ourselves in terms of eating food that we are making instead of uh, eating what people have prepared and brought to us. And um, I think the first time, to be quite honest, I think the first time I go to the bathroom is going to be a little reality check. So there you go. After the rousing send-off in the morning, most of the first day was spent getting ourselves acclimated to the boat. Even though we prepared our first meal under somewhat primitive conditions, it tasted wonderful and lifted our spirits. After that eventful first day, we received a joyous welcome at our first stop, Brandenburg, Kentucky. A large, excited crowd was waiting, and the official welcome was given by Mayor Ron Joyner. Joyous occasion for the city of Brandenburg, for them to make us a part of their pilgrimage. Uh, this is, uh, they called me back, oh shoot, it's been, what, nine months ago, said that uh, they were coming to Brandenburg, and I didn't, at the time, I didn't think it would be quite this big, but it, it's just really something, and I really do appreciate you all making Brandenburg a part of your building. We ended our exhilarating first day with prayer and singing before we settled in for our first night on Angela's Ark. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. After breakfast the next morning, we set sail on the longest segment of our journey, a two-day venture from Brandenburg to Cloverport with an overnight stop along the riverbank. During the day, there was much time to think and pray. Everyone needed to have some time to write down her thoughts about the journey. We don't know what the First Sisters thought because we have nothing written by them. Maybe in another 100 years, someone will find our writings and venture down the river again. Leaving home for a place far away Knowing the river won't lead them astray to fulfill a dream, no, we not what the future would bring. Their mission was their journey leading to their destiny, singing songs by candlelight, the stars. facing the unknown and hopefully, I think they must have all had an adventurous heart. I think that's part of the Ursuline uh, spirit is an adventurous heart. That's why Angela named this for St. Ursula because she was a woman of great adventure. I think they all have welcomed us so 
mean, it has been exciting. It's been emotional for me. A huge sign welcomed us to Cloverport as we ended the third day of our journey. Another big crowd, including a number of our sisters, was there to greet us. Mayor Thomas Wheatley escorted us up the hill to the Cloverport Park, where he officially welcomed us to his community. And welcome to Cloverport. Thank you very much. We're glad to have you here. and we. we Glad all everybody came out to welcome the Earth and Sisters on their journey down the river. And we appreciate the sisters selecting Cloverport as one of their stopover points on their trip. We're honored to have you here. Once again, we presented our host with a wooden cross and maple trees, and then joined the crowd to pray the Our Father and to sing the Magnificat and Five Brave Ursulines. We didn't have much time to eat because we were waiting for a telephone call from National Public Radio. Sister Pam and I were going to be interviewed by Scott Simon for his Saturday morning program, Weekend Edition. What a thrill. People were going to hear us all over the United States. And you're listening to Weekend Edition from NPR News. This week, five Ursuline nuns have been floating down the Ohio River on a flatboat reenacting the pioneer journey that the Ursulines took 130 years ago to found a school in what was then the wilderness of western Kentucky. Sisters Amelia Stenger and Pam Mueller join us from Cloverport, Kentucky. Sister Amelia, thanks very much for being with us. Thank you for having us here. And why this trip? The trip is to let people know that the Ursuline Sisters of Mount St. Joseph are continuing their mission of education. The second reason is to talk about vocations in our community. We know that there are young women who are being called by God to become a part of our mission, and we want them to know who we are and that we're not afraid to take a risk every once in a while. I'm wondering if you could hand the phone to uh, Sister Pam Mueller for a moment. Yes, I would. Here yeah. she is. Hello. Sister Pam, how are you? I am fine. I understand you christened this flatboat with a, what, a carton of buttermilk? Uh, a jar of bar buttermilk, as a matter of fact. We did that because when our sisters first arrived at Mount St. Joseph, they were greeted by a family who served them watermelon and buttermilk for their first meal. Mm -hmm. um, I think we christened the inside of the boat because we cut open a watermelon and one of us dropped it. And so now we said the, the inside has been christened with watermelon and the outside has been christened with buttermilk. Sister Pam, with with respect, do you think if a bunch of Jesuits had been involved, they would have christened the boat with something a little stronger than buttermilk? No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt in my mind, they probably would have. <laughs> um, Sister Amelia? Yes? I'm wondering if if you feel a sense of affiliation with those nuns of 130 years ago who who traveled whenever they went into the wilderness, that's the way they traveled, and they trekked, and they had to worry about, I assume they had to worry about grizzly bears, and, um, and, and they lived as rough as anyone else in the frontier. The more I get involved in this, the more I admire their pioneer spirit, the strength that they had, the faith that they had to go into something that they did not know. So... It's emotional for me to go back and think about what they had to do when they were coming along the river. And we are so touched with the special gift that they gave us as far as their strength, their faith, and their courage. And I think that that's what we have to continue to be as Ursuline Sisters of Mount St. Joseph. Sister Amelia, thanks very much. Yes.
Thank uh, you. Sisters Amelia Stenger and Pam Mueller, Ursuline nuns who are making a boat trip down the Ohio River uh, to see pictures of their journey and learn more about it. You can go to our website, npr.org, and it's 22 minutes before the hour. After the segment aired, we started getting emails from everywhere. It was great to know that people all over the world had heard us on NPR. Later we found out that CNN and 97 television stations across the United States and Canada had covered our adventure. The Ursulines are still alive and well. Day four of our journey took us from Cloverport to Grand View with a brief stop at Tell City, Indiana. Our breakfast that morning contained a surprise ingredient, eggs laid by our chickens. We had intended to save them, but Sister Mary Lois saw them before we told her and they ended up scrambled on our plates. We kept breaking the large rosaries we wore on our habits because they easily got hooked on things. Sister Pam was the official rosary fixer. I don't know where to begin. It was um, really an awesome experience. Um, it was nice to um, be with this particular group, um, to be with our captains, and, and it, gave, it gave the five of us who were on board uh, a chance to bond. It was more than just traveling down the river. It was an attempt to understand a little bit of the spirit that, that drove the sisters in the direction they went. Uh, I wouldn't say it's just a boat trip, but it was more than that because it was spirit, it was prayer, it was song, it was laughter. I am very thankful that the five came, and I'm sure it was very, very scary for them on the way down. Captain John and Captain Joe and Captain Will all were right there to save us. Anything happened. Favorite part was um, last night when the six of us prayed, evening prayer, and then we shared some stories about how we saw God in the people or the places that we were that day. Do not be afraid, for he will lead your way, and you'll never be alone, his faith will lead you home. The one thing the Pioneer Sisters didn't have to do was travel through locks on the river. They weren't built yet. We traveled through the Canelton locks, but we didn't have to wait for any river traffic. All the tugboats and barges were docked because the McAlpin locks in Louisville were closed for repairs. That was such a gift for us. We didn't want to have barges, so the Lord closed the locks just for us. Sister Pam drove into the locks, and I drove the boat out. It was a great experience. None of us had ever been in a set of locks before.
It was a beautiful day as we arrived at Tell City, Indiana. People were lined up along the ramp waiting for us. They were very gracious. They even had the pastor's dog there to greet us. Some sisters and associates were there too. A gentleman with a hand organ was also there to meet us. He had come all the way from Nashville. He invited Sister Suzanne to give it a try. Tell City Mayor Gail Strassel gave us a warm who's your welcome and we presented her with the wooden cross and maple trees. We all prayed the Lord's Prayer, we sang the Magnificat, and we all sang five brave Ursulines. We had our picture taken by the flood wall in Tell City. It had a wonderful mural painted on the wall that said, like the mighty river our heritage withstands the test of time. That is also true about our Ursuline heritage. We then departed for a short trip to nearby Grandview for our last stop before heading home to Owensboro. Being of an Ursuline sister, I wanted to reenact of what happened uh, back in 19 1874, and I'm really excited about this. And it's been a really, really grace-filled time to go up and to come down this river and think about those early sisters who did this, wondered how they were at that time, and it's just been delightful. It's, it's been heavenly, really. The moment that Amelia shared the concept, something as the visitation moment, left in my spirit, and I felt that it was um, inspired and that the that the idea would be anointed and I said I have to be a part of it. One of the biggest crowds of our trip was waiting for us at Grandview. The people there were so good to us. The women, led by Eloise Hughes and Betty Stallings, served a great meal. They also took up a collection and gave us a wonderful gift before we left. The crowd again included a number of our sisters and associates. We were welcomed by Grandview Town Board President Kevin Myers. Of course, we responded with our gifts of the wooden cross and maple tree seedlings, prayed the Lord's Prayer, sang the Magnificat, and joined together again to sing five brave verses. After spending our final night at Grandview, we were greeted by a glorious sunrise on our last day of the journey. The sky was clear and the weather was just great as we headed home. And honor your name forever. Your love for me is great. It saves me from the grave. The proud rise against me. Brutal gangs seek my life. With, With no, no thought, thought of you. But, but you are Lord of mercy and care. A God, a God slow to anger, full of loyalty and love. Turn, Turn to, to me, pity me, me. strength and Because I feared, I guess, a possibility of a storm, but instead God blessed us with this beautiful weather. I mean, I couldn't have asked for a more perfect day. The beautiful clouds, sunshine, and just perfect weather. So I, I, I think we're really blessed in that regard. What I'll probably remember the most is having uh, the opportunity to meet so many people that have known the Ursuline Sisters for all these years, many of them taught by the Ursuline Sisters, all along the river at the different stops. So many ask about different sisters who couldn't come to the stops, but who are at the mount praying for us and, and waiting for us to get back. Um, I think I remember all those stops and those people that were there. I wanted to be a part of it because uh, I made the flag that's flying from the boat up there. 
uh, and I made several of the costumes that were worn on the uh, uh, the sisters wore on the boat, and I made a, a song uh, to the tune of Oh Susanna that people enjoyed uh, singing uh, while we were going along, and it, it sort of tells our history in a nutshell from 1874 until now. Finally, we were home, and we couldn't believe the crowd. People were everywhere. We even saw Father Volk, also known as Father Brian Roby, waiting for us. Many of our family members were there too, along with many of our sisters. Captain Joe and Captain John carried up the trunk that we think came with the first five sisters. It is a great part of our heritage. In the Smothers Park gazebo, we were greeted by Sister Michelle, Mayor Waymond Morris, and Judge Reed Hare. Sisters, it is a pleasure, as Mayor of Owensboro speaking for the City Commission, uh, to welcome you to Owensboro. We may be 130 years late, but uh, <laughs> in our hearts, we, uh, we're certainly uh, appreciative. This, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. 
We recognize the Strell family for being there in 1874 to take the First Sisters in when they didn't have any place else to go. And for the last time, we presented wooden crosses and maple tree seedlings to Mayor Morris and Judge Hare, prayed the Lord's Prayer, sang the Magnificat and five brave Ursulines, and then left the park, headed for Mount St. Joseph in a wagon pulled by Bill Mattingly's beautiful matched mules, Daisy and Kelly. When we arrived at the mount, Bruce and Sheila Blanford were there to meet us, dressed as Bruce's early ancestors, Aquila and Louise, who had been there to meet the Pioneer Sisters. The symbolism was so special. They have been a part of our lives for so long. Still another large crowd had gathered to welcome us home. We are here to welcome the five Pioneer Ursulines who came by flatboat from Louisville to open an academy. Gracious God, we thank you for the safe arrival of Mother Pia and her four companions. Through the inspiration and guidance of the Holy Spirit, strengthen their resolve to show the face of God to the people of Western Kentucky. Sustain in them living faith and loving service. Bless their apostolate of teaching. Reassure them of your providential care. Together we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Blandfords were given a plaque in honor of the Blandford family. When the sisters first came, the Blandfords fed the sisters their legendary first meal of watermelon and buttermilk. A Blandford family member has worked with the Ursuline sisters of Mount St. Joseph in every generation since the beginning. Special recognition was given to Captain John Cooper and his crew, Captain Joe Farmer and Will McClurkin. Now, in honor of each of the five Pioneer Sisters that we met, uh, we are going to plant a maple tree that was grown here in the nursery on campus for this occasion. And the five sisters are going to place the trees in designated spots. 